they they won't give you something I, I don't feel that they're taking advantage of you that's the first thing i feel like for some reason they feel that you might be the best candidate to do the job or to take on that role or to you know do that extra work and they feel that you can do it right so you might have more expertise than the average person or the average worker so they're giving you a lot more work and i don't i feel like in about 6 months time the extra work that you're putting in is going to be rewarded, okay? You're going to see some boost to your finances. You're going to see some people throwing your names up there for promotion, for supervisory or management position. I do see a huge public image boost as a result of you taking on these roles or even like a lot of income generating potential because you're taking on more work. So I don't feel that you're being picked on. I feel that other people want your skills and your expertise because they believe you're the best person for the job, okay? Um, on a side note, for those of you who have been harboring secrets or like, you know, um, if you have something that you're not telling your partner it's really important to do so. I'm going to get another card. We're missing a card here. It's really important to do so because I feel like, first of all, we've got the lovers and the devil. Both of these indicate third party. And if you don't fess up, I do send some secrets being spilled out. So just be very mindful about that, okay? So let's talk about your reading. I do think it's going to be a little bit of a challenging month if you are not doing the right thing okay cancer so please be careful okay so we've got the lovers and the ten of swords so <clears throat> the ten of swords signifies a beginning uh, I'm sorry an ending to something and this is a very very major catastrophic blow to the ego to the status quo and it's something that cannot be returned to okay we have the lovers here and the lovers is usually a third party interfering in a relationship, in a love relationship. It alone means that it's usually some type of a betrayal in love, in somebody that you really, really care for. And um, people say that it's a heart or head choice, and it definitely is. You know, like if you are betrayed by somebody, somebody that you really care for, do you stay with your heart and stay with them or do you think with your head and leave them because it's bound to happen again? So I feel like if you're dealing with this situation, you, it's, it's the final straw. I don't feel that this situation can be restored, okay? So if secrets are coming out from your end or their end, I do see some permanent walking away. I do sense that um, reconciliation is, is very, very difficult after the Ten of Swords. So just be very, very cautious about communication. On the other hand, in a more mundane sense, I do sense arguments breaking out this month and I do feel a lot of it has to be surrounding like exes, okay? So third party interfering. I do feel exes and, and the huge influence. Like I feel like it's a stubborn ex. It's not your partner that's doing this. It's either a very, very stubborn ex from um, your side or their side. And I feel like this stubborn ex has an inflated sense of ego. And they won't go away. They won't accept the fact that you or your relationship partner is in a happier state. So they keep coming in and interfering. And I feel like it might cause a lot of discord in your relationship. With the Ten of Swords here, if you have been friendly, um, you know, sending friendly text messages or whatever to the ex, you might want to stop because your partner is going to ask you about it. Or if your partner finds out, they might be very angry. Because I don't, there's no need to contact an, an ex. And I don't feel anybody would want their significant other to be contacting an ex unless they have children together. And even then, the text messages should be very, you know, professional and um, platonic, okay? So I feel like something about communication, text messages, um, even social media concerning exes is coming through. And I do feel that for a lot of you, it might be... I don't feel like it's innocent platonic, you know, text messages, messages. Um, I feel like a lot of it has like other intentions. So just be careful about this. Um, I do sense it coming through from both parties though. So, you know, can't um, really try to be careful if you're on the 
uh, receiving end of these inappropriate messages, okay? I don't feel it's completely innocent and platonic here. Not with the lover's card. It's rarely innocent and platonic. Um, we do have the devil here and the chariot. So I guess the best way for me to put this here is um, what I'm sensing, first of all, and this is more of a message here, I'm feeling as if somebody walking in on somebody with another person, okay? And I don't want to sound fatalistic with these readings, but I do sense that's a uh, um, small minority of you. And I feel like it could be walking in when they're talking to the other person, texting the other person. I see somebody kind of like um, caught off guard and something slips out, unintentionally slipping out, okay? So be very careful with communication to exes or people outside of the relationship if that's something that you're dealing with um what i feel overall with this combination we do have the devil and the devil is usually indicative of some type of addiction it's something that we cannot break ourselves away from it seems to me more like a physiological addiction caffeine nicotine um alcohol even uh substance abuse and things like that on the other hand, it can, I feel more physical addiction. So, you know, food, uh, exercise even for a lot of you. I do sense this is a really good month for you to overcome these addictions, okay? If you feel like certain f addictions have taken over your lives and it's not allowing you, I feel like a lot of you might have kept this under wraps. And I don't know why, but I'm getting like uh, a lot of gym addicts, a lot of food addicts. And I feel like it has really interfered with your um, f your freedom of movement. It has really interfered with your um, your ability to really enjoy your life. And I feel like a lot of you, small minority of you actually, small minority of you, um, you might have like some type of personality disorders, I feel. You might be OCD where you try to control everything. And then, well, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's your fault because I feel like that is out of your control, but there are medications that can help you with that. Um, I feel like it's really, you know, in the process of having to plan every minute detail, I feel like it's really interfered with your ability to live life spontaneously and freely. So I feel like a lot of you are making progress in trying to rectify this situation and trying to fix it, okay? There might be food addictions. There might be nicotine, alcohol. Um, I feel very strongly it's interfering in your love relationships, okay? Your partner might tell you uh, to do things differently, try to find ways to curb the appetite, or try to find ways to break from these chains. If you are en route to doing that, I do feel a lot of you are going to have success, okay? We do have the chariot here, and the chariot usually, usually indicates it's a lot, a lot of self-discipline. That is required in order to pull ahead, okay? So the inner conflict needs to be uh, laid to rest so that both parties can move forward and move on to a, a safer place, okay? So addictions are being kicked to the curb this month, and you both have to try to, to be very, very determined in getting this situation rolling along. Now, in terms of your emotional state, we do have the Nine of Cups and the King of Wands. So the Nine of Cups... It's a card that indicates uh, wish fulfillment. It's a card about generally happiness. But so the Three of Cups is also a card about happiness and celebration, but you're with other people. This is something that might potentially be like uh, you're celebrating, but you're just by yourself. So there's a smug energy associated with this. There's also that overindulgent energy because it's one man in nine cups. So it's a mixed bag, okay? And what it's associated with here is the King of Wands. So a lot of you are dealing with a fire sign. So this is, um, I feel, so this is Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. And this, this person is in your life mainly because they're bringing you a lot of emotional fulfillment. I feel like they, they're very caring. They're very nurturing. They're very like, um, they know how to stroke your ego. They know how to say the right things um, to compliment you. They shower a lot of love and affection on you. And I feel that this person really, really makes you feel good. They make you feel whole. They make you feel wanted and needed. And I feel like with a lot of cancers, that's what you need from a relationship partner. You need a lot of support. You need a lot of like men mental like validate, um, 
it, sorry. Emotional validation. You need a lot of emotional validation because sometimes you can be insecure and you need that self-esteem boost from your significant other. And I do feel this person is showering a lot of it on you and you feel like you're on top of the world. Um, there is a very strong emotional connection here, okay? Once again, I keep going back to three three people like a third party interfering in a relationship a lot of you are making um are, are like you might want a relationship with this person and you might be pursuing it keep in mind it's the nine of cups it's on route for um there's just one more for the completion okay there's just one more so i feel like there's something holding you back it could be another person that you are dabbling with that they're dabbling with it could be geographical distance too because I'm looking at the background and I'm looking at um, the just the images and I feel like culturally you might be different. There's like a, a one last divide but I do feel that the relationship can come together if you both work at it, okay? I see both parties like uh, very, very happy with one another but no one is really taking a step forward. That's what I'm sensing here. So do something about this. If you've met somebody like this that really sparks your passion, go for it. Now, in terms of your finances, let me see here if I've talked about finances. In terms of your financial situation, we have the Five of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. The Five of Pentacles is a situation where there might be some financial um, shortages, okay? And uh, let me talk about this in terms of finance. You have, a lot of you are thinking of ways in which you can overcome this financial hurdle. A lot of you might have grown up in an environment or have been for the past five years, bouncing around, trying to find, you know, a good job, trying to, trying to find a job that has security or trying to secure a stable financial future for yourself. A lot of you might have been doing odd jobs here and there and none of it really pan out. And you're feeling as if, you know, this is just my luck. I can't find anything that can really, um, that can really, you know, uh, be sustainable, be dependable. So a lot of you are at a point where you have not only like, um, not only are you dealing with financial hardships, but you're also dealing with, um, like a, a crippling in your self-esteem. I'm sorry to say, but I, I feel that both of these cards together might indicate that. Um, others of you might have resorted to less than, um, I guess, like um, honorable means to make money, okay? So doing illegal activities on the side, resorting to the informal economies in order to make money. And, um, you know, we do what we need to do to survive, okay? To survive. And, um, I, I really, I, I can't say it any other way because this is not about admonishing you or chastising anybody about what they need to do in order to survive, in order to make make ends meet. But what I want to say is the Seven of Cups is a fantasy card, okay? And the fantasy can only last so long. Pretty soon it will, um, the reality of it will come crashing down. So you want to be very mindful about what jobs you're doing and how long that's realistically going to last you and what are some of the risks involved with it, okay? So this is not a, 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 a criticism. This is not a judgment call, but it's more like serving as a warning. So, you know, at what expense are you willing to uh, put up with for these very, very quick and unreliable spurts of financial gains. Okay, so just be mindful about that. What I do sense as well is um, I do feel for a lot of you, and I know this is going to sound far-fetched, if you are dealing with the Five of Pentacles, and this is a very, very rough situation to be in financially, and I feel like most of us have all, all been there. This is a rough financial situation. It's feeling cast out, feeling like you're on your last penny, uh, and the advice I'm about to give you just wouldn't make sense. But this is what I'm feeling. Um, I feel like a lot of you are very, very resourceful and very intelligent. You're very intelligent and, you know, resourceful. And you, once you find something that you love, you will do it and you will do it really well. And be, it's because you're a water sign. You work from the heart. So it's just a matter of finding something that you really, really love, okay? 
And I feel like for a lot of you, if you are at this point where you're just like jumping around different jobs and you're not able to make ends meet. And um, if you're thinking to yourself, like, is there a better way to do this? Look into going back to school. Honestly, I know that's not helpful for me to tell you this because you want to make some money and you might be feeling very strapped right now. But maybe there's financial aid, maybe there's scholarship, maybe there's like stipend that can come through that will alleviate this situation because I feel like it, it's just a series of like bouncing around and none of them really panning out, okay? So the job situation, in order for you to get anywhere, I do feel look, at least do some research, look into school and see if that's something that you want to do because I feel like there is something here, like it's basically it's telling you the saving grace is behind you, but you're not looking in the right direction. You're training your eyes to look for all these hustles and you're not really looking at a situation objectively, okay? On the other hand, I feel for others of you, you're not going through. So I feel like with the cancer spectrum, it's either you're in really, really good, you know, steed um, financially, or you are kind of like this feeling very, very downtrodden and very worried about your financial situation. Others of you who are not dealing with financial issue issues where you are constantly, uh, losing sleep at night, if that's not you, what I feel is a lot of you are in trouble of losing a very, very strong karmic relationship because of the wandering eyes. Okay. Temptation. Be very careful about that. You're losing something very significant to you. You're losing somebody or y y the other person might be losing you because of the wandering eyes. So keep your partner in check. And if there are some suspicions, bring it up to them. So I feel like a, a significant relationship is being tested and somebody's sense of loyalty is being heavily, heavily tested this month. So just keep that in mind and try to act accordingly, Cancers, and try to do the right thing, okay? Now, in terms of your advice, <clears throat> first card out, we have the Wheel of Fortune. This is a card about uh, fate and, you know, actions and consequences, okay? I don't want to say anything else, but I, I do feel that's the situation that you're dealing with, okay? Um, what it's also saying as well is, and this is going to come as a relief for a lot of you who are dealing with um, financial worries, it, I feel like in one month's time, like around the time of July, your financial situation is going to get a lot better. You're going to have a lot more financial stability. It doesn't pr promise a financial windfall, but it promises more clients coming through, more opportunities for savings. I feel like more work coming through as well. If you are uh, those type of uh, like seasonal workers, I feel more work piling on and you're going to have money coming in very, very soon. It says like July is, um, it's like the, the pretty much the gateway. I feel like a lot of options will start to open themselves up and you're not going to be in dire strait anymore. Okay. So look for viable long-term solutions rather than short-term like temporary solutions. Okay. Look for jobs that are a little bit more, you know, that if you're working like three months a year only and you make a lot of money and you're just like, I'd rather do that. And then the rest of the year, you don't do anything else. That's not a good use of time. If you're working on the other hand, if you're working like 12 months a year and you know, the pay is a lot less, which of course it would be, but it's sustainable throughout the year. And there are other perks associated with being a full-time, you know, a uh, worker as well. So aim for things that are a little bit more grounded because I feel like you're floating into space and you have some bills you need to pay. And I feel like you're not making these rational decisions this month. Okay. In finances and also in love, because in the tarot, those things are very intertwined as well. So make rational, practical, long-term, sustainable decisions in love relationships and also in your finances because I feel like with a lot of cancers one is always like causing problems in the other um, finances will affect love and love will affect finances I feel like that's usually the case with cancers so you know something to think about so the other aspect I'm seeing here is the ten of pentacles and the ten of pentacles usually indicates a lot of family expenditures coming through like um, fixing a house expanding a house 
uh, people moving in, people moving out of the house environment, expanding your household base. So additions to the family, I feel like this is something coming through and you might be required to take on extra work. So I feel that's the case. I feel like a lot of work are piling on because people know that you're the best candidate for the work. So they're piling on not because of resentment or, you know, forcing, not because of like office bullying, but mainly because they feel that you're very, very suitable for the job. So I feel like you might be headhunted out of the blue and they might be giving you a lot of projects to do. And as a result, it is going to help your income generating potential greatly. Okay. So overall, it is going to be a good month for those of you going through that uh, financial hardship. I do sense situations are going to start turning around this month. I do feel it's going to be like around the 24th, the last week of the month, unfortunately, but I do sense something coming through. Um, I feel new jobs coming through. I do sense, see you sending out resumes as well if you're looking for work. And I would say do it the beginning of the month because after the 24th, I feel like some things will start rolling for you, okay? So do it the beginning of the, the month from the 1st to the like the 20th or something. Take a break and then starting on the 24th, you will start to see things going your way. Things like um, coming full circle is what I'm, I'm feeling. Um, beware of picking fights with, you know, your significant other over their exes. If they have a tendency to do that, then I feel like it, it's important to be respectful if you just started out a relationship and it's a fragile, you know, new relationships are very fragile, okay? That's when we do all the intention setting for our significant other. That's when we learn to work together. So texting an ex or communicating with an ex, unless you have children, unless like you have children, I don't feel that's the best way to go. And that's a good foundation to build a very new and fragile relationship on. So just be very mindful about that, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to get too preachy. So let me see about your love and relationships. Let's see what's going on. So <clears throat> let's just go to reshuffle. What's in store for cancers for love and relationships okay i'm going to use those two what's in store for cancers for love and relationships okay okay so the center of this spread we have here the i'm not sure this is the page of wands I don't feel it's the night. Yeah, it's a page of wands. Let me just get all the other cards. Okay, I'm going to pull out another spread here for the page of wands. Okay, so cancers. You have a fire sign here, a Sagittarius, Aries, and uh, Leo. And this is a fire sign. And this is somebody that is very, very much interested in you. And I feel like they're a really good person. They have a good heart. You know, generally very truthful, very honest. And um, they really value honesty. Fire signs value, value honesty extremely, okay? What's crossing this situation here is the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune seems to me, this is how the, the, the relationship happens. The Wheel of Fortune is something that starts out very, very faded. All of a sudden, you cross each other's path. You have a lot in common. Everything is great, great chemistry, great romance. It's like the whirlwind love affair. When it shows up in the reverse position, there are a lot of obstacles standing in your way. And when it shows up reverse like this, I feel almost like you have to decide if it's worth overcoming all of those obstacles to be together. Because I feel, first of all, this is a very, very hesitant fire sign. They do care about you on the one hand, but they avoid conflict, okay? They don't really want to get involved if you're with somebody else. And there's this um, aversion for conflict, aversion for confrontation, okay? So there are major, major blockages. And honestly, when the wheel of fortune comes up reverse, I'm just going to say that it's not meant to be anymore. 
it was in your life for a very very short stint of time and it's gone and this person it seems like the the relationship is faded but i don't feel that it is i feel that in the future you will see each other again but i feel that in terms of reconcil reconciling or even having any type of a long-term lasting relationship it's going to be very very difficult so this is a month for you to decide once and for all if this is something that you want to you know pursue and to continue with okay the choice is still up to you I do see possibly the wheel of fortune reverse means the portal is open so there is potential here for this person to cycle back into your life in the near future or in the far future what's in the past here we do have the ten of swords and the ten of swords is a situation that is done and over with um, because they're showing up in the re upright position I'm going to say there has been some hurts some pains some um, suffering in their past they have been through a lot and they don't really want to uh, be in a situation where they are stabbed in the back where they are like uh, destroyed emotionally and physically okay so I feel like you in the past position if you are still dealing with a person like this I feel like a lot of you have come from this place of darkness if it's not you then it's the other person that you're dealing with so uh, both of you are mutually very very conflict avoidant because you don't want the repeat of this you don't want words to get um, you know thrown about and you don't want problems to get blown out of proportions where you each say whatever it is that's on your mind and then you can't retract your statement okay so I feel like a lot of harsh words thrown about a lot of deception as well usually with the ten of swords what's coming in for you in the future here we do have the passion card and this is greatly indicated for like physical uh, attraction um, sexual chemistry It's a very very good card um, to have like a physical relationship with someone um, I do sense for a lot of you you are dealing with an air sign here or a fire sign so air sign or Aquarius Gemini and Libra fire signs are Sagittarius Leo and um, Sagittarius Leo and um, Aries and what I'm what the cards are advising you here is as the crowning energy you do have the ten of pentacles in the reverse and the foundation we have the page of swords so I feel it's almost like this a lot of you are transitioning from an air sign to a fire sign or a lot of you are transitioning from a fire sign to an air sign and I feel like you have trouble letting go you have tr trouble letting go you love these people both and you have trouble trying to decide like I feel for some reason there's a lot of passion with the fire sign but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like um, there's a lot of passion with the fire sign for sure with the ace of wands there's a lot of stability with the air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra there's a lot of like common values common beliefs common philosophies um, a lot of history potentially like you both have spent a significant amount of time together you understand each other inside and out there are no surprises I feel like that's what's happening and you have trouble transitioning a lot of you might be juggling two people a fire sign and an air sign and you don't really know which one you should go with um, I feel that let me pull out an advice card for you because I don't honestly don't know which one you should go with either it's saying here release the air sign go with the fire sign that's what it's saying the fire sign is going to be a hard relationship so you have some work cut out for you we have here the eight of pentacles so whoever you've been hanging on to for like that um, whoever you've been in that eight months eight um, years relationship with and this is a relationship where you introduce each other as a relationship partner that's the one they want you to let go because that situation is not going to pan out okay eight months eight years so they're saying to release the air sign and go with the fire sign okay so for those of you who are single and dating I feel that a lot of you have to overcome some type of emotional trauma from the past and you have the two choices the air sign and the fire sign and there's a lot of passion with the fire sign but I don't feel stability associated with that relationship so if you're single and dating and you're just newly dating 
take it very, very slowly. Find the person that you are compatible with. With If you're single and you've never dated this fire sign or this air sign, the air sign actually feels like a more stable choice. If you're looking for something more solid, the fire sign seems like more of a one night stand. If that's something that you want. For those of you who are in stable relationships, um, I do feel fun excitement is being re-injected in the relationship. I do sense there's an element of like, um, I know this sounds weird, but I feel like there might be some exes popping in the, to the picture. And um, first, at first, it seems like you might argue over it. But then after a while, you feel like it, it's really reigniting the passion. You feel you feel desirable for each other again. You know, like you, you feel like desirable with each other, sorry. And you feel desire for each other once again because there's that jealousy. I don't know how that works with you cancers, but I feel like that's what's happening. It's like exes are coming through or your partner, uh, you feel like your partner is, um, you feel attractive, attractive again. You feel like wanted and needed again because someone is like giving you that self-esteem boost. So I feel like you're bringing that back into the relationship. So there's a lot of stability in solid relationships for those of you who are committed.